Good morning. God is good. And all the time. Amen. I kind of want to say God is great. And all the time. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Amen. Good. So I have a few announcements, but welcome. Welcome to Morton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Gabe. I'm the associate pastor. Uh, pastor Gary Feldman, our directing pastor. We're glad you're with us in worship today. If you are visiting, uh, please connect with us in one way or another. Uh, in, in, in this little, well, it's, it's not this, but you have a little blue thing in your aisle that'll go down through. But we want to connect with you, and uh, we're excited to be in worship with you this morning. We have some great things happening at our church today. The corn boil. Is this our, is our first annual corn boil? John, come on up. He's going to share a little bit about our corn boil. But it is a potluck. Bring a dish. I think you show up about four. We'll eat about five. And I'll let him tell you a little bit more. Good morning. God has been truly good to us. And there are 5,000 ears of corn sitting out in our parking lot. So, <laughs> so hopefully there will be only a half a dozen left by the time you guys are done buying so. Actually, we just ask for donations like every year. Uh, there's a bucket out there. There's sacks. What we're doing, we're raising money like we do each year for the school kids in Liberia. It doesn't take a lot of U.S. dollars to send a kid for an entire school year to a Christian school, but we're trying to send a lot of kids. So the goal is to, oh, and you should see how our youth has helped us this year. Is that the time lapse? Yep. That's not time lapse. We just really work fast. <laughs> It was amazing. The kids were awesome. 5,000 years, 50 minutes, 20 kids. People are really stepping up. So please, uh, if you want to get a bunch of dozens to put up, then don't feel like you got to give a lot of money. Just whatever the Lord uh, wants to send you to do. So we appreciate it. I think Eric's going to mention about the corn boil. He will uh, in a minute. Come on up, Eric. But uh, I'm, I'm sandwiching all these announcements together. There is something very special happening at Zion Oaks Tabernacle in East Peoria, Tuesday and Wednesday evening. It's the 166th revival. Amy? It happens, it happens all week. Starting tonight. Okay. Very. St- okay. So starting tonight at 7 p.m., revival at the Zion Oaks Tabernacle in East Peoria. Reverend Danny Mata will be there. And Reverend... Gary, Gary, not Danny, thank you. I got Danny on the brain, I'm meeting with him tomorrow. Gary Mata will be there speaking as the evangelist and the other pastor, help me out please, Joel Catlin will be there, he's the pastor of Zion. They'll be doing their play Tuesday. Yes, the play is Tuesday and Wednesday night, Act 1 Tuesday, Act 2 on Wednesday, 7 p.m. You'll want to be there, it's really special, Uh, you're invited to come to that. And in the midst of that, we also have a basement sale and eric will tell us a little bit more about that as well going on um just so you know there there we go just so you know there is um uh, there's probably going to be a corn boil no matter what today so if it's raining at four o'clock we're going to figure something out so you can still come with your dishes uh the other thing is we have a lot of donations it is probably twice the amount that i have ever seen since i've been here so thank you for the donations uh, the other part of the help that we do need, um, especially today, any time between noon and hopefully only 10 p.m., uh, who knows, though, uh, we'll be organizing. So if you even have an hour, couple hours, any time that you have to put stuff where it goes and sift through this big mess that we have right now, that would be a big help. The other help that we could use, if you have a pickup truck or any kind of large transport vehicle and you are available at all um, Wednesday about 12 30 one o'clock um, Mission Mart is not going to send a truck this year apparently they only come for furniture now so we don't have a lot of furniture and what we do have will probably sell so uh, all the extra stuff that we'll have at the end of the sale we don't have a big truck coming to gather it so we need help uh, if you have a truck and you can come and lend that so we can load up your truck and you take to Mission Mart, that would be a big help. So please uh, keep us in mind, and tonight and tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday, if you can help, let me know, and we will figure out a way for you to add to the cause. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. So there's a lot of activities happening at the church. 
It's kind of the back to school almost starting. Uh, we have a back to school blessing next Sunday during all three services for administrators, for staff, for teachers, for students. So please, if you are one of them, come. If you have friends who aren't connected to a church, a great time to invite them to come and we can recognize them and ask God to bless them as they begin their school year. So again today, the corn boil, bring a dish to pass. We'll have games, family fun, and maybe we'll get some work done on the basement sale and uh, help Eric and the youth group out as they're raising money for that as well. Would you join me in worship as we stand and sing, Holy, 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 and let's turn our hearts and minds to God this morning. Join with me in our responsive reading this morning. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. And while staying with them, He ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Amen. Let's share the peace of Christ with one another this morning.
Okay, can we have the kids up front, please? Okay, thanks. This is great. Last service, we had zero kids. So I had to bribe some junior high kids to come up. (laughs) Bribe them with smiles like I didn't actually give them anything. Um, Okay, who can tell me what a verb is? Yes. An action. An action, he said. Um, Yes, an action, typically. It's something you do. But who can think of what a passive verb might be as opposed to an active verb? So an active verb, active, 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 but then a passive verb. What might be a passive verb? What about sitting? You think sitting? Does, does you feel like you're doing anything when you're sitting? No? Just, you're, you're, yeah, you're just sitting there. But can it, who here feels like they have pretty good control over their body? They understand their muscles and stuff. Okay. Can you come up here and sit, sit right here? Okay. So sit. Sit nice and strong. Okay, now think about all your muscles, and I want all of your muscles to relax. All of them. Are you sure? Are you sure? What about your back muscles? Can you make those go into jelly? (laughs) Can you make your leg muscles go to jelly? Oh, yeah. See, good job, buddy. High five, yeah. Um, So, yeah, that is a nice picture of we think sitting is a passive verb. Nothing's going on. But we're tensing all of these muscles, and if we let them go, then we just fall to the ground. We could all try it right now if you want. No? Okay. (laughs) A couple of people? Yeah. (laughs) Um, So what about waiting? What about waiting? Do you you think you're very active when you're waiting? No? Has anybody waited in a long line before, like for a ride? Okay. What were you doing when you were waiting in line? Yeah, those are long lines in Six Flags and, and Wisconsin Dells. Can, so can you think of when you were waiting in line, how did you pass the time? What did you do? I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> what about you? Do you remember what you did when you were waiting in line? <laughs> Listening to Dad talking to other people. That's what he said. <laughs> Okay. I remember when my wife and I, this, we were younger and we were just dating. We were just boyfriend and girlfriend. And we went to Six Flags together and we were waiting in one of those hour and a half lines for a really cool roller coaster. And when we were waiting, we played, we came up with three secret handshakes. We played like 150 games of rock, paper, scissors. I was a little bit better than her. And then we played that that game where you put your hands underneath the other person's hands and you try to smack their hands before they can take, take them away. She was way better than me at that. And we played like 150 games of that. So in that time, we actually we fell more in love waiting in line in Six Flags because we realized that even when it's really boring and there's nothing going on, we really like being around each other. And we make each other laugh. And we just like each other's company, even when there's nothing going on. So we were like, yeah, uh, this is going to go somewhere. This is great. That wasn't torture. All that to say that even when we're waiting, we're still doing something. And not only are we doing something, but stuff is going on that we have nothing to do with. The ride operator, if we're waiting at Six Flags, he's... I don't know what this is, maybe cranks or something to start the ride. 
uh, but he's doing something. Other people are doing something. Stuff is going on so we can get to the goal, right? Have any of you ever felt like you've waited on God? Maybe. You've asked God for something and you just had to wait for it because it didn't happen immediately. Yeah. There's a lot of waiting on God that happens in our lives. And as you get older, you'll experience it more and more and more. And we feel like nothing's going on. We feel like it's just passive. It's just boring. Blah. Time goes by and nothing happens. But that's not true. God's doing something in us. He might make our trust stronger. He might make our faith stronger. He might make us more patient. And he himself is doing so many things in the background that we might not even see. Maybe to prepare us, maybe to prepare the world around us so that we're ready when the big thing comes. But waiting is not passive. There's a lot going on when we wait for the Lord. And that's something hard to remember, but it's something we can remember, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Kind of? Okay. That's good. Good enough. All right. Would you pray along with me? Dear God, thank you for chances to grow, including when we're waiting. Please, God, give us the strength to trust you when we wait. Help us to grow when we wait. We thank you that you hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. kind of on. That was my fault. Sorry, Nick. As we continue in worship, as we recognize how blessed we have been by the Lord and all the things been given to us, the provisions made, the lives that we have, let us offer ourselves and on the gifts and tithes and offerings back to the Lord for His glory. I invite the ushers to come forward and the congregation to prepare for the giving of our tithes, gifts, and offerings.
Yes, Lord, we are grateful. These gifts we offer, and most importantly, our lives, we give to you and say, Here I am, Lord. Use me for your service and glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We come to a time of prayer together. We have some joys to celebrate. Vicky's dad, Vicky Bennett's dad, 93 years old. Woo! It'll be a big party for him uh, later today, but his birthday's on Tuesday. If you want to send some cards, 93, Bill Knapp. That's pretty exciting. Very exciting. Also, Ron and Sherry Patterson. Are you here? I don't know if you were here or not. 50 years of marriage. Woo! Thank you. Thank you for showing us how it's done. The young ones like myself and Eric and others, we need to learn how to get to 50 and beyond. That's good. Very good. Uh, We also have uh, a special uh, presentation of the Lord's Prayer that I want to alert you to now. We won't be saying it together, but we will be seeing it and hearing it in a very special way. Uh, Thank you, Amy Smith and Nora Bishop, for uh, presenting uh, the Lord's Prayer for us today uh, later on. Things that we can keep in mind, also joys but concerns. Uh, Many people have been in and out of the hospital, but the key word is out. And they are back at home in the residence. So Cliff Lowry is home. Uh, Ray Schmidt is home recovering from back surgery. Uh, Dorothy Funk uh, is also home. And um, yesterday there was a wedding between Adam and Madison and now Kumpf. And so we are excited for them and want to pray a blessing upon them as well. Pastor Gary's uh, officiated that and enjoyed uh, the family time immensely. So uh, Adam and Madison, they're just starting year one uh, and with many years to go. Uh, And there are many things in our hearts and minds, of course, that we are uh, thankful for and want to bring to the Lord in prayer and petitions to be made uh, for our friends and family, for those we don't know, uh, for the work of the kingdom to be done uh, through us and throughout the world. So let's turn to the Lord in prayer this morning together. We quiet our hearts before you, Father. We come to you knowing of your love through Jesus Christ, through the presence of your Holy Spirit given to us as a gift. We come on this special day to worship you, God, to be a part of the body together, to sing praise, to hear your word, to be encouraged in our faith and to encourage someone else, to grow our families in the community of fellowship. We know that you are here. We have gathered in your name. And so we lift up our praise to you, recognizing you as supreme, as God, as the author of everything. Recognizing that, too, we have been made in your image to be a reflection of you on this earth. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our hearts and fill our minds. And renew us this day as we continue to try to be the faithful disciples that you have called us to be. Help us to live into our mission to make disciples and to transform the world by your love. And in your love, through forgiveness and grace and mercy. Lord, we lift up names to you earlier that that have been through surgeries and that have been cared for intensely in the hospitals. And we pray for recovery and healing of body, mind, and soul. We thank you for the facilities that we have available to us. Lord, we pray a blessing on our doctors and nurses and and service personnel that help us to manage our bodies. We ask wisdom and protection upon them as they continue to serve the community at large. 
Lord, we ask for your blessing on this church as we continue to be those faithful disciples, hearing your word, responding to it as a body of believers, brothers and sisters. May this church and your church universal be united through Christ, through the work of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be sensitive to that. This day, Lord, we ask that you would search our hearts and search our minds. Reveal to us the things that keep us separate from you, the sin in our lives, whether in word or deed or thought or intent or lack thereof. Lord, help us to be one with you and one with each other. Hear our prayers, Lord, as we come to you in confession. Hear our prayers as we come to you in petition for others to know your love. If our job is to make disciples, help us to seek out those who aren't and to bring them into the family of God. Lord, hear our prayer. And hear this prayer as it is sung and signed. May we stay in prayer with you. Always. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven. Amen. 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 We come to the table. All are welcome to this table in the United Methodist Church who seek to grow in their relationship with Jesus, to receive Him, to respond to His love, to repent of sin. And so we come to this table remembering Christ our Lord, remembering the sacrifice that He made for us. As we begin to explore the book of Acts today, we turn to the book of Luke, the author of Acts, and we find in chapter 22 his account of the institution of the Lord's Supper. Hear the word of the Lord from Luke as we begin this service of Holy Communion. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him, and he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again 
until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, Lord, This bread and this juice, we ask that you would embody them with your spirit, that they would be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, that we may be one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your faithfulness as we repent of our sin and walk into victory with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The ushers, please come forward and we will serve communion in your seats. body of Christ broken for you take and eat in remembrance
Jesus Christ, the sinless one, took on the sin of the world as the atoning sacrifice for us all. Take and drink and remember God's love. We have changed things up for you. The reason why I want communion before we preach is because I want communion center and first and foremost for us. I don't want to have to rush through this. This is a great remembrance and reminder for us of what Jesus has done. And I... You know, sometimes I feel when it's the last thing in the service, I, you know, got to get through it to get on to the next thing. I don't want us to feel that way. Communion is, is holy communion. So we need to take the time to uh, remember and get refocused on the wonderful host Jesus is for us. For he is the bread and juice becoming the body and blood for us. So... I want to read from Philippians, excuse me, Acts. We're in Acts now. I love Philippians. It's hard to get out of that book. Flip, uh, Acts chapter 1. Now this is the second part of Luke's writing. He wrote a gospel and then he wrote a history. The gospel we call the Gospel of Luke, the history we call the Acts, the actions of the apostles. And he says, he says, in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and to teach. To do is his works, to teach are his words, the words and works of Jesus. And apparently he has been compiling this for a person by the name of Theophilus, this This is my take on his name. His name literally means lover of God. Theos, Philos, God, love, lover of God is his his name. I think this was a name that was given him, a nickname. Because of what happened in his life, in his relationship with God. People saw in his life his love and adoration for God. So they started calling him Theophilus, the God lover. So this book is written, in a sense, to us who are God lovers, aren't we not? We should be lovers of God. People should see that in our life and say, wow, what is it about, what about him that, that is about God? So all of us are Theophiluses, lovers of God says, um, until the day when he was taken up, Jesus was taken up, he ascended. And that's what this chapter leads to. After he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering for many, by many proofs. Jesus is a historical person. There's evidence of him for 40 days, people who he inter- interacted with. This is documented, and so... Don't buy the lie, Jesus is some figment of our imagination or he wasn't real or whatever people will try to say. Uh, He presented himself alive to them, appearing to them for 40 days, speaking about the kingdom of God. Then uh, uh, Luke says, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart the city of Jerusalem 
but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. At the end of this text, verse 14, well, 12 says, They returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, where they were when this happened, when Jesus ascended into heaven. And verse 14, all these with one accord were devoted, and that's another important word, they devoted themselves to prayer together with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Let's pray. Father, in these these moments, we ask your Holy Spirit to help us understand your word and help us to uh, wait upon you with our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but waiting is not something that comes easy for me. And I find myself getting frustrated at times with having to wait. Um, I, I, you know, Eric talked about those famous lines at Six Flags. You know, you, you wait an hour and a half to get on that ride, and it lasts how long? 70 seconds or something like that? <laughs> hour and a half wait for a 70-second ride? But it is so exhilarating. You get right back in line, and you actually go to the next one and wait an hour there. So we, uh, But waiting is part of life, isn't it? Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, it is part of our lives probably need to find a statistic that tells us how many waiting moments we actually have in a day. But they're there. They're there. I, uh, I, I, you know, I've, I felt the timeliness of every worship service, 8, 9.30, 10.45, and to try to get everything wrapped up in 60 minutes. And I had a really great First service, because this clock was stuck at 8.39. We got it fixed. Darn it. So it says 10.17. So I've I've got it right there. But I I, I think about Nick back there, because he's looking at us to give the thumbs up to start the service and, uh, you know, make the recordings that we have, which I'm discovering the blessing that people who get these DVDs and uh, places that receive them and they listen to them, it just multiplies out. So timing is important. And uh, we we try to go by that. And 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 I'm waiting, waiting for something to happen so we can get started or waiting to get my prayer finished before first service so we could get started. And I'm the one praying. And, you know, we do those things of waiting for something to happen. Ray Schmidt had surgery this past week, and he told me that he, had, he knew, I think it was five weeks in advance for when the surgery was going to happen. So there's a gap of time having to, to wait and to wait and to wait. You know, why can't that happen within a few days? when it's determined what has to take place. You wait. I remember going to a doctor's office recently, and I walk in the door, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, I'm the only one. And then I go to the, go to the, the window, and I check in and sign in, and I hear those wonderful words. You can find a seat and wait. And I'm thinking, well, this will be great, because I'm the only one in the office right now. Wrong. Still had to wait. Had to wait quite a while. Because something was going on the other side of that office space that I had no idea, but obviously something had to be taken care of, and I had to wait my turn. So we wait. We wait in line. We, we wait at, at the grocery store. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Amen to that. I... Uh, 
I, in the summer, I had season tickets to the Muni in, in Forest Park in St. Louis Thursday night. So when I go down there, I always go the same way. I always go into the park the same way. On King, King's Highway, Barnes Hospital there, there's a light. It's a left turn. And it goes into Forest Park on the east side. And it is absolutely the shortest left turn signal light in the world. And there's probably 10 cars lined up to make this turn to go in there. And we're all waiting for that first person to hit the gas. Depending on how that first person goes depends how many cars are going to get through there. And if they're slow, you might get two cars. So you're, you know, it's just like, oh my, and that's a long light to begin with because they got a lot of traffic going north and south and, 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 and I'm, I, there I am, waiting, hit the gas, we can get three cars this time, but it doesn't always work that way. Now, the disciples were told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem. Don't leave the city. You stay in the city and wait until a gift arrives. Boy, how many have been waiting for the UPS to arrive with that gift? You know, the world's pretty efficient today. When when you place that order and and now you can track it. You can can get a device. I put it on my phone. I can can see where that that gift is being delivered. I, I sent something to my daughter in New York City. And I think it was originated in Atlanta or something like that. But it went to Colorado. I'm going, why is it going that direction when, you know, from Atlanta? It's, and then it, it, it tracked it all around there. And it arrived. It got there. But, you know, I'm, I thought I saw, it, I saw it in West. I thought, then I start to wait and I go, Why? Would they go that direction? But we wait. The disciples are told to wait. And it said a few days. When you heard the word few days, how many days do you think a few are? How many think two? Well, not too many people. Are, how many think three? Yeah, I bet about three days. How many think four? Five? Six? Hey, you know how many days they waited? Anybody know? Three? Anybody want to guess? 45 million? No, not quite. It's a good guess, though. Ten days. Ten days. Jesus ascended after 40 days, and then 50th day was Pentecost, 50 days. So there was a 10-day gap there. Now, they says they were in the, in, the, in the upper room, the disciples, and I don't know what they were. I, I know one thing they were doing, but as, as Passover approached, they had to begin making preparations for that because this is one of their holy days. One of their three great feasts, they're making preparations for it. But when people are together and you're waiting, and you know this because if you've been in families, you kind of get on in each other's way, so to speak. I'll say it kindly like that. We get in each other's way. And we get a little frustrated, and we start thinking, Start thinking, well, I wish they'd be quiet. Talk too much. Wish they would just kind of take care of their clothing. It's kind of... You know, things go on, and we get consumed with all that stuff. But listen, friends, waiting has a purpose. Jesus said a few days wait. Now, waiting on the Lord requires patient trust. 
It's a trust issue, isn't it? The disciples had to trust him. He said, wait in the Lord for a gift to come, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they're trying to figure out what that really is going to be. Wait is a trust issue. See, we live in a world that says, don't just stand there, do something. Right? We've got to be active. We've got to be doing something. We've got to be productive. God says often, just don't do something, stand there. Now, that's hard to hear sometimes, is it not? Just stand there. Just go in the city and wait until you receive what I have for you. It's an issue of trust. Waiting means we give God the benefit of doubt that he knows what he's doing better than I think I know what he should be doing. Secondly, waiting on God reminds us that God's in control. Okay? We've got to come to terms with this in our life. Waiting tells me that I'm not in charge. Waiting tells me that he's in charge, not me. And that is not the easiest thing to do. We all know that. But this is about him. I I loved that presentation of the Lord's Prayer and the signing that went with it. And um, what was the phrase? Thine, yeah, thine, thine is the glory. Nora put her hand up like this. Thine. See, this is this isn't this right here, lifting holy hands to the Lord is is an okay thing. If you ever want to do this, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry what somebody else thinks. This is okay. Lifting holy hands is good. But what position does that put me in? Vulnerable position. See, this is an act of surrender, is it not? This is an act when the, in, 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 in war, if you surrender, this was an act. Of, I laid my gun down. I am, I, I've surrendered myself. I've laid everything down. I'm giving myself over to you. This is, this is the position of the Christian. Thine is the glory. Because see, this is all about him. Not about me. Waiting puts me in this position. Okay? Thirdly, waiting on God allows the Lord to do his work. This word that is used used for wait by Luke is a compound word. The the root of it, the verb of it is meno, M-E-N-O, meno. It means to remain or abide. It's used quite a bit in the book of Acts, chapter 15, when Jesus talks about abiding, and re- the vine and branches abiding with one another. Meno, 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 all through there. But it's perimeno. There's a, there's a conjunction added to it. Peri is this circular movement. You know when an airplane is, is starting to make that descent and they get word of, oh, you can't do this. You need to go into a, what's it called? holding pattern, and they circle around the city a few times, and you're looking down there going, we got to get down there. (laughs) But you're in a holding pattern. I think that's an idea of what that word's about. To wait puts us in a holding pattern, but there's activity in the midst of that holding pattern. We are waiting on the Lord, and we understand that he's got it. I don't, and that's a good position to be in. God's timing is best. God is at work while we wait. I didn't mention this in the first service, but you need to hear this. The church was birthed out of waiting. Now, there's another side of that that's more important. The church was birthed out of waiting prayer. 
The Bible tells us that when we wait on the Lord, our strength is increased. Those that wait upon the Lord, their strength increases. They will mount up like wings of eagles, Isaiah. So what did the disciples do? He said, wait in the city. The Bible tells us they prayed. Can you imagine that? When I go to the Muni this time and I'm sitting in that line and waiting for that line to turn, I'm going to be praying instead of telling that guy ahead of me to go faster. And when I go wait in line at the grocery store, I'm going to start praying for the people around me more often than trying to think, why did I get in this line? So what are you going to do when you're in a waiting pattern, when you're in that hovering, circling pattern in your life? You know, when you go to a hospital and you go to a waiting room and you sit there with family and friends, that's a God time, is it not? Because you're out of control. This is, you're... you're, all you're doing is waiting, and you're, you're praying, and you're interceding, and you're having a God moment there. Make it more of a God moment. Make it more intentional in your life. It is a holy moment, but I don't have to wait to go to a hospital to do it. I can do it in my car. I can do it in my home. I can do it right here in this chair. Can we not? We're in a holding pattern for a corn boil this afternoon. We need to be praying quite a bit while this happens for us. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do when that next waiting moment comes? And they come every day. You going to gripe? going to complain, going to say a few things that you will have to repent about later, or you're going to pray. Let's be people of prayer. I want this to be a praying church, and just, and I, I know it is already, but I want us to increase in our intent in prayer. I want us to, to build on that and, and to... Uh, You know, God births great things through prayer. And waiting prayer birthed the church of which we're part of. That's exciting. So my challenge for me is to be part of that prayer pattern. How about you? Let's pray. Father, help us to be your people wherever we are, to uh, wait upon you. You've got it. You're in control, and we can trust you. Thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, stand and sing our closing hymn, which is uh, Spirit of the Living God. It's a chorus. I want us to sing it two times. Make this your prayer.
this week, sing that song. Just ask the Lord to fall on you as you pray for others. And know that uh, whatever holding pattern you might be in, God is with you. He's got it. He's, in, he's good. You can trust Him. So go forth from this place waiting on the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.